Hello and welcome back to The Den. Look at me. This is like another video. <laughs> I'm so keen to build the channel up again now that I've decided to come back. And, um, and also I've also discovered that, um, yeah, most of those videos have gone by the way. <laughs> I've been trying to upload old ones, you know, the ones that I deleted and uh, they are deleted, a lot of them, just can't find them. Because every now and then I have a little flashback memory of, I remember talking about that or I remember doing that tag or whatever, but I have no idea, no idea where where those videos went after they got deleted. Then, you know, it's not... Um, I don't know it's just they're not trackable so uh gonna have to put in some effort and rebuild the channel from scratch you know Ernest Hemingway lost an entire manuscript once and he rewrote the book so if he can do that I can rebuild we can rebuild this <laughs> all right so I thought I would do a tag today because tags are a beautiful way of connecting they're a beautiful way of giving newbies like me um something to talk about you know and something to reflect on and uh so i'm super super grateful for those who initiate tags that they're a really really fantastic thing so this tag comes from ravenclaw but it came to me via alvine now i will link to all these channels down down below but um huge follower of alvine didn't know ravenclaw until i saw this tag uh so i've also uh, of course i have um subscribed to ravenclaw as well but alvine is here in australia and uh so that is a bonus for me uh to have another southern hemisphere witch out there who's so incredibly knowledgeable and so generous with her knowledge is just such a blessing so i love alvine she's really really cool so thanks alvine for doing this tag um and she alvine also pointed out that you don't have to tag anybody else or you don't have to be tagged in order to reply to a tag you know it's not strict there's no rules around this so um that's really cool as well okay so question one is new year's resolutions do you believe in them why or why not okay easy one new year's resolutions don't get involved <laughs> i don't i don't get involved um i actually really really don't like new year like new new year's eve um i stay well away from it energetically it just feels super super fractious to me and oh gosh for me there's an ugliness about new year's eve i don't know it's really crash crass um I, it sounds see this is this is judgy me coming out okay I talked about my shadow the judgy me <laughs> uh and I just get really uncomfortable w uh, when I see these really really to my mind gross celebrations of kind of nothing and the money and the energy that's put into the fireworks and all that it's I remember a friend of mine who's also pagan said you know Rome's burning <laughs> and we're setting off you know millions and millions of dollars of fireworks down on the river this is you know in Melbourne and Sydney um oh, it just it just there are homeless people out there I'm not you know I'm not being as Scrooge, you know, and I like a good time and fireworks are pretty. One time I, um, but they just spend too much on it. I mean, just light a few, you know, but don't, I don't know, it's just too much for me. I just can't, I just can't sit by and watch it. One time years ago, I was in Brisbane and I was on a, a book tour and, um, which sounds a lot more glamorous than it actually is. Book tours are just friggin' lonely. <laughs> But anyway, I was in my uh, hotel room and I had a beautiful hotel room out overlooking the Brisbane River. It was a weeknight and I'm back in my hotel room and I, I hear this sort of boom, 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 boom noise and I sort of draw the curtains and look out and there's these massive fireworks going on on the river and they were on the river. So what I realised was I couldn't see it in the dark but there was some kind of raft thing boat thing going down the river very very slowly setting off all these fireworks and um i i discovered later on that it must have been some kind of wedding 
because um, that's a tradition in some cultures to to set off all these fireworks for, for a wedding. And um, and at first it was just, you know, it was like the little rings. It was like, <laughs> it was astounding. I was sitting there thinking how lucky I was to witness this. But then it just went on and on and on with no hint of a plot. <laughs> it was just like, oh, will you shut up with your frigging fireworks? <laughs> I never thought I would get bored of fireworks, but I did. That was too much. It was too over the top. And, of course, I went into how much money have they spent on those fireworks and how, how many people could they help with that money? Whatever. I don't want to be that person. Uh, I want the world to just turn the way the world does without me sitting in judgment of it, okay? That's got to work through that one. But New Year's resolutions, no, don't get involved. Stay out of New Year. Never go out on New Year. I like to just go to ground and um, just uh, mark the passing of the time you know in some sort of significant but quiet way to myself but I do love um word of the year so and I do love the blank slate of a new year and I love a new journal and I love a new it all stretching out before me I love that sort of like new over that new year period that week after new year's eve uh, even between Christmas and new year I love that that time when you just sit quietly and take stock and I love to select a word of the year and then you know think about how I'm going to work with that 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 word going forward we've recently just discussed this in one of my groups um, we we all chose it's June now so we're halfway through the year so I was asking everybody what you know how they're going with their word of the year so it was really interesting a lot of people had actually forgotten or a lot of people had really committed. Um, for myself this year, I had chosen simplicity and I felt like I'd taken simplicity as far as I want to take it. I'm actually bored with simplicity now. And um, because I, you know, I, I applied it to sort of decluttering my house, decluttering my wardrobe, that was a big one. I went really, um, I re went really hard <clears throat> with um really simplifying my clothes and my wardrobe and um, moving everything on that I wasn't wearing and simplifying my colour palette so that everything sort of matches, getting a lot of it, um, advice from YouTube channels on capsule wardrobes and whatnot. So that was fun. And, and then trying to sort of simplify my emotions as well. So not getting so over the top about things, she says, after sitting in high judgment of the fireworks. <laughs> um yeah so simplifying my emotions a little bit so anyway that's been a six month thing for me because I'm a bit bored of simplicity now so I don't have a word going forward but I will come back to that see how these tags lead you in all different directions that's really cool Harry's just come in hi Harry darling you're a beautiful boy hello He's not going to come up and say hello. All right. What is your favourite colour? Does your favourite colour hold magical or emotional meaning for you? Um, my favourite colours are greens and browns and autumn tones. That's where I love. That's where I feel the most comfortable. I adore colour of all, you know, all colour. And I love seeing people brightly dressed in all sorts of, you know, garish combos and stuff. And I've played around with that myself many times over the years. But I always come back to earth tones. I never feel, and I've accepted this now, you know, this is part of simplifying, I think. I never feel particularly comfortable in really bright colours myself. Love seeing them on others but they, they make me feel, if I wear really bright colours, I feel a bit sort of, oh, it's a really weird, I feel a bit scratchy emotionally. Like I feel a bit, I don't know, it's just so clearly colour has a, a profound emotional effect on me, you know. I just like to feel the grounding of earth colours. I like to feel um, the softness of them. Um, I tried on some, and it, that goes for fibres as well. I tried on something one day in a, in a shop like a Uniqlo or something. I was with himself and I pulled on this coat and it was um, it was some sort of garish nylon-y thing with fake fur, fur and shit. And he just said, oh, God, you look so weird in that. <laughs> he said, oh, that's, that's not natural fibres, Jen. 
and it was just so funny because we had never had this conversation but he had sort of subliminally picked up on the fact that I always wear natural fibers and that which I thought was very sensitive of him anyway so color uh does hold very magical uh and emotional meaning for me and yes it's it's earth tones very much linked in with um the wild witch you know um also I must add though I love pink I friggin adore pink to the point where if I see something pink out of the corner of my eye my heart will literally skip a beat or speed up <laughs> it has to be the right pink you know um not so much that plastic you know I call it plastic pink I don't like that plastic barbie pink but I do like a I think it's a pink with an orange tone that I like. When I've played with paint and mixing colours, I, I find I need to bring oranges into the pink to get it to the pink that I actually like. So, yeah, artwork with, a, with just, you know, with just a splash of pink in it um, or a room that has pop, pops of pink throughout it. It's a real heart a real heart colour for me. When um, my eldest son was little, he went through Steiner and um, they're very colour conscious there. And each year the classroom is painted a particular colour that links into their stage of growth. And the one room that I always remember is the prep room for the little is because it's pink, but it's a transparent kind of pink, not a block pink. It's sort of like a spongy pink um so there's lots of significance around that I'm sure I haven't really gone into the science of it but um it's certainly a heart color pink uh to my mind and then rose quartz and all those beautiful things so oh yeah and I and and black I wish that I loved wearing black but black is that other color that I really really dig it on other people but when I put it on I tend to feel you know a bit sort of I don't know just it just doesn't bring me bring me joy it doesn't bring me to life I, I it's the dark browns and the charcoals absolutely but hard black feels hard feels uh, I don't know I don't know it just doesn't feel right on me but again love it on other people and see people I mean god I'm from Melbourne hello everyone wears black all the time head to toe that's what you do <laughs> um but not me I've got I've got a black duffel coat that's about it I don't have any black so colors are very very interesting um and I'd like to get into them more actually in terms of um, magic and stuff um what else do you use substances for divination or meditation Exa example flying oils herbs or alcohol um why and why not um no nah. <laughs> nah, god no i don't i don't even use alcohol like i would never drink before i meditate i just fall asleep um uh, no i no judgment like it's, i'm just not that's just not my bag although you know if someone said here's a here's a joint you know and let's have a little play I'd, I'd be up for that but you know cannabis is illegal it's hard to come by if you don't know if you're not in the, if you're not in the groove anymore um you know I've had my time with all that and um yeah <laughs> I, mean, I can barely take a Panadol without falling asleep. So, um, no, no, but I really do admire people. I, I really, you know, I really don't have a judgment around it. I think it's really cool that some people use some trippy agents to uh, very safely, of course. Uh, but I'm sure that there are lots of witches out there, you know, you, dabbling with um, some of these substances to um, get more insights and stuff like that. Um, yeah but it, you know it's unpredictable it's it's dangerous it's uh it's not my it's not my bag um yeah uh what is your favorite part of your practice i think for me it's the romance of it it's the whole thing it's the whole aesthetic 
it just lifts my spirits. It just enriches my life and fires my imagination. And it, it's not a one thing that I do within the whole craft. It is the whole thing, the fascination of it, the learning, the 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 fact that you're never done you never arrive there's always more and you learn one thing and it leads to another thing and and that for me is that's my favorite part is the just the learning and the endless knowledge and experience there is within this field um and the imagination and creativity that goes into it it's just so exciting and so so nourishing so yeah what is the least favorite the least favourite part of your practice? Um, of course, I've written this down, so it's not as if it's a new question to me, but I haven't, haven't really been able to settle on anything, on anything. <laughs> um, sorry about my voice. This is nothing really that I, that I don't like about it, except, you know, emotionally I haven't liked or haven't enjoyed um, the imposter syndrome that it's brought up in me. I haven't liked that feeling of um, feeling inadequate and feeling like I don't have anything to contribute and the on again off again you know public sort of journey that I've been on has at times been a little bit confronting not so much humiliating but <laughs> but a little bit confronting so that's the side of me that that uh, that witchcraft has brought out so um and I suppose that's been my least favourite experience of the journey, but I can't say that it's you know, a bad thing. So, yeah. Um, how do you feel your practice has grown over time massively? Massively grown over time, not in its complexity. It's basically the same as it was four years ago. Um, it's just deeper. It's become much deeper. I'm still doing the same things, but the same things are having richer results and I'm more experienced. So my reflections are more insightful and educated. And uh, the other thing, of course, is now I have a little more uh, experience. And so I can speak more from experience. I can draw on that experience and share that experience. So that's been a real deepening of my craft um, that I've really, really enjoyed. And, and uh, the roots of my craft seem to be going deeper and deeper. Whereas before I was, you know, a bit of a sapling, but now I feel like I've got a decent trunk and some big roots going down. And, uh, and yeah, I just feel way more grounded in my practice. So that's the way it's grown. It's strengthened and it's deepened, but it hasn't become you know, it hasn't become more complex and I'm not doing this, doing that and doing that. I'm a little bit of a magpie, but I do tend to rein that in a bit. So um, keep a check on that. All right, what else have we got here? Um, is there a show or movie that inspires you? How long have you got? <laughs> like, seriously? Uh, um, <clears throat> loads of things inspire me and, and a lot of them and a lot of things are not necessarily linked to witchcraft per se but they give me a magical feeling they they uh, invoke in me that same kind of response that witchcraft does and um they make my my world feel more magical and um and so i return to them for instance um the movie of the shipping news it's only got a tiny bit of magic, but there's a, it's enough for me to, I just love that Newfoundland setting, the remoteness of it, the wildness of it. I love the reference, you know, the, the little girl who's sensitive and she understands that house and she understands that house's pain. Uh, if you haven't seen the film, then you should, because um, I think you'll dig it. The old fellow who lives down in the coves, you know, and ties the magic into the knots, the skinny ghost, as the little girl calls him, friggin' love it. And the soundtrack, just that Celtic soundtrack, it's always on in my car. Like, it's always on. Um, my car selects it for me, seriously. <laughs> I get in and think, am I going to listen to something else today? And the shipping news soundtrack will come on. Um, so 
you know, and I have written a book myself, like a novel for kids inspired by that music and that that Nordic stuff. Um, it just really fuels my imagination and the magic of my own creativity because I see more and more and more as I'm in this world that my creativity is my magic. You know, I'm not that big into spellcraft yet. I'll flag that because I would like to be, but I'm just not. And that used to be a problem for me. I used to think, well, you're not a witch because you don't cast spells. But now I realise that spellcraft is just one little section of magic and that magic comes in all different shapes and sizes and forms. And so storytelling is my magic. Writing has been my magic for the last 20 years, you know. Um, it's how I enchant. It's how I cast glamours. You know, writers cast glamours over their readers, you have to understand that that's what you're doing, you know, and, and, and you can see that you've, oh, this is going off in another tangent, but you can see that you've achieved that when kids or writers, or, uh, other writers or kids' parents contact you and, and or come up to you in person at events and they, they think they know you. They think they know you personally and it's because you've, you've cast a glamour by over them by creating this story and putting it out into the world. Logically, they know they don't know me. But, you know, in a magical sense, there's this connection of consciousness that comes about through storytelling and through art, that, that it's an intimacy uh, that is shared. And so when I reflect on that, I can see the magic in it. You know, I just, just... anyway. So uh, the shipping news, practical magic. Oh, my God, of course. I watch that two or three times a year. Friggin' adore it. Can I just flag, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but, you know, if you, if you look at practical magic through, a, through the lens of um, feminism and fe feminism, feminist analysis, man, is it, is it is so conformist, that film. It's so binary in how it approaches everything. It's, it's almost astonishing in terms of the way it subtly teaches women to conform. You know, it, it shows us that, that, that unfettered, untamed women need to be punished. They either need to be punished or they will lead others into terrible situations, which is what Nicole Kidman's character does. She's sexually promiscuous. She's wild. She's, um, she has a lot of self-autonomy and self-understanding, a, a, a deep spirit, adventurous spirit. And what happens to her? At the end of that film, she is left holding the cat. She's alone. And the good girl, Sandra Bullock, is rewarded with love. And not only is the good girl, Sandra Bullock, rewarded with love, she's rewarded with the love of authority because she falls in love with the cop. Now, what more of a, of a character can we have standing in for patriarchy than the local cop or whatever he is, the detective? You know, like it's just extraordinary in its in the subtle ways that it reinforces old paradigms so I find that you know from an academic perspective really really fascinating you know and the characters of um, um, Stockard Channing and Diane Weiss who is one of my absolute favorite actors of all time they are adorable those women on the margin are and they're empowered but they're also treated as a little bit foolish and not really worth going into any depth with. Um, and of course, I know for you know economy of narrative, they have to keep. Uh, they couldn't explore every character, but I find those two women fascinating. Which is why now I'm re I'm reading the Practical Magic series. I've started at the beginning um, with the books because I want to know more. And I'm just oh god, I just love what's magic. Uh, Magical Lessons, I think, is the first book. I've got it. And I, for some reason, I can't remember the title. I'm literally just reading it. I only started last week. I love it. Love, love, love it. Alice Hoffman is an incredible storyteller and writer. Just really digging it. Can't wait to get to Practical Magic and, um, and see for myself how that story plays out in the book and see then what Hollywood did to it. And, again, I want to come back to I can switch off all that academic analysis 
and just love practical magic for what it is. All right. I just um, I just really wanted to flag that with any of you who are interested in looking at film and literature in that way and through that lens and interested in talking about binaries and the subtleties and the nuances and the trickery that's out there that lulls us into accepting certain ways that society should be operating. Even Sandra Bullock as a witch, she is very quick to reassure everyone and particularly the guy that she's no danger. She's no danger, that she's not, she's making um, hand cream and bath oils. That's her witchcraft. See what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> oh, Oh yeah, Hollywood. Will the patriarchy will let you be witches, but you have to be within our own. You know, we have to feel safe around you. We can't possibly let you be powerful. You know, and and in your stand in your power, we can't allow that. So um, she's she's very and very much a non-threatening uh, witch. And then at the end, when their witchcraft is sort of um, accepted by the society, they are. Um, used as playthings, as entertainment, you know, they're, they're jumping off the house holding an umbrella with their little magical shoes and socks on. Again, I can divide my mind. I can look at this with that sort of analysis, but I can also just love it because I do. I love it. So I'm not, I'm not um, suggesting for one minute that we should all, you know, <laughs> boycott practical magic because there's just so much in there to celebrate and to love um, and the aesthetics of it, that house and the kitchen and um, the, the coming together of the women uh, at the end, you know, to solve the problem is just absolutely beautiful. So there's, there's many good things in it, but I just don't think that the, the, the dark side of practical magic, the film, has been discussed enough. So that's, that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, I also really, really love The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, the you know the sort of the recent one with Miranda Otto is my she's just my pin up, she's literally my pinup girl she's there behind those sticks um, a photo of Miranda Otto as Aunt Zelda she is a queen you know in terms of the fourfold goddess mother maiden queen crone Miranda Otto um, Aunt Zelda she just nails that role and that archetype and I adore her and the strength that she exudes in as that character I, it's just remarkable I won't say what I think about the last episode in the series because if you haven't seen the series um, I don't want to make it a spoiler alert but I will say it pissed me off incredibly <laughs> But again, I don't want to get on my high horse about it, but the ending of that series was just, I don't know, it was such a shame. Um, do you have a familiar? Uh, I like to think that my cats are both uh, familiars. Harry's over there in the chair. I think I'll move the camera a little bit. There he is. Mm -hmm. um, and Beatrice, who is our latest rescue kitten, her and I have really, really bonded, super bonded. So, uh, yeah. But I did have a little dog who I, who I wasn't, you know, a witch at the time when I look back. But that relationship with that little dog was so intense, incredibly intense. Um, and she was like, she was never, she was never um, away from me. She was just utterly devoted to me, even though she was my son's dog. Um, when she was about, well, I, I think she wasn't even one, she was run over and it was so traumatic and we thought she was going to die and the vet was gearing us up over the phone to have her put down. And um, we went in to visit her and she was in the vets in the little cage and she, it was like she was dying. She was, she was dying. And... Um, <laughs> We went in and we sat before her and she looked at me through the cage door and she, she just spoke with her eyes. Like you could see the light, life sort of returning to her when she realised that she wasn't being abandoned and that we were there still and she wasn't just shut in a cage in some strange place. It was really sad. Anyway, um, 
I just looked at her and I said to the vet, we can't, you know, we were really poor. I, I was a single mum. We can't put her down. We have to do all we can. So she got shipped off to this specialist and my cousin chipped in and gave me some money and all these things happened. And we had her literally put back together again with screws and bolts and things. And um, she lived till she was 18 and she just never, ever took her eyes off me. She was just devoted she was a beautiful beautiful little dog so that's been my intense experience of a, I'm sure she was my familiar I still feel really really attached to her and every sow and yeah I can't have photos of her around the house because I'd be too sad but at sow and I bring her photos out and put her on the altar along with all the relatives and everyone because she's incredibly important to us all our whole family um da, 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 da. Would you recommend any YouTube channels? Would I ever? Um, I'm just going to say a couple, but then I'll link the rest down here. The, the formative ones for me have been, of course, Kellyanne Maddox. And it was Kellyanne who suggested to me we had a um, spiritual consult and um, she re recommended to me that I start a YouTube channel. This is way back, you know, when I was really flip-flopping and she, was, she said, Jen, just start a YouTube channel and have a bit of fun and put it out there and see what happens. And uh, see, it'll help you get your thoughts in order too. You know, it'll help you view your witchcraft and your journey by having a YouTube channel. So Kellyanne um, has had a massive impact on me. Um, uh, Anya Orga as well has also had a massive impact on me, as has Jessica at Jessica and the Moon, um, all three and also with Jessica in the moon if you have a look back through her old videos you'll see she did an A to Z of witchcraft which is fantastic it is so so great um, and so instructive and so informative and um, incredibly generous like all the witches on YouTube so have a look at that again I'll link it down the bottom um, also Mags Black amazing Scottish witch who I adore she's into druidry, druid, druidry and uh, tree magic um, and all that kind of jazz Alvine who I mentioned at the start and um, Mad Witch I love Mad Witch and I love that Mad Witch and I are around the same age and um, and Mad Witch of course is a bit further ahead in her journey but um you know, she's, she's, she sees herself as a newbie a lot like me as well. So I just feel a very strong connection to Mad Witch. Um, she's gorgeous. Love her. So I'll put all those links down below. Uh, name, name something you must do daily for your mental, emotional uh, well-being or for your practice. For me, it's definitely morning pages in that quiet time. And there's only myself and um my partner now in the house but I do like to get up before him I've always liked to get up before everybody else in the house and have that quiet time on my own journaling morning pages I call it you know from Julia Cameron's Artist's Way but to light a candle to light some incense and to sit down and journal um, it sets me up for the day and I feel quite resentful when I when it doesn't happen. Even if I consciously decide to have a sleep in and go, oh, well, it's Sunday morning, you know, I suppose I should stay in bed. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll lay here a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. I just have to really psych myself up for missing that part. That There's such a magic in the early morning air. There's a real magic that's going around in that in that vibe and um, it really sets me up for the day and it really helps me with my mental and emotional health to do that every day uh, so yeah very very special um, what's something that started as an obstacle obstacle but you can now see it as a blessing um, that's kind of like a life question to me I mean I know I suppose it's to do with witchcraft um, and I suppose for me, it was my scepticism um, that was my biggest obstacle and my self-doubt. So, you know, when I first started to explore the witchy path back in the 90s, um, I was very quick to drop it when friends around me said, what? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. What are you reading? You know, um, and poo-pooed what I was reading and who I was 
who I was reading um, uh, and the whole concept of I was exploring Wicca at that at that point um, and so I listened to the my friends and dropped it so that was sort of my first obstacle and um, the way that I see that as a blessing now is that I I think it was for me it was probably good because um, it meant that I explored lots of other things and I learned about lots of other things and I de devoted time to being wildly eclectic in everything um, that I explored including my own creativity and um, and I wasn't I don't know I mean I haven't got the benefit of hindsight here but I wasn't distracted by witchcraft and I think I might have got very distracted by it who knows where it would have led it might have led to something amazing I don't know but it seems to me now all part of the puzzle of my life and it's all fits together um, uh, and it's all happened all these things happen for reasons so um, I don't know if I've answered that very well but there you go um, uh, question 15 god have you made a cup of tea yet I hope so uh, which do you prefer YouTube Instagram Facebook or TikTok uh, YouTube, hands down, fucking love it, love YouTube, love chatting to people, love the creative outlet, love the uh, storytelling, um, being in the position to tell stories just off the top of my head, but also to enjoy other people's stories, to have my friends with me while I'm doing the dishes, <laughs> while I'm folding the laundry, um, all those things in the evenings when I don't want to watch TV but I just want to sit on the couch and knit and watch a YouTube video, watch my witches, totally, totally love YouTube. Uh, I really enjoy Instagram. I think it's problematic and there's a lot of shit going on over there, you know, with all these bloody dickheads, you know, invading people's accounts and pinching them and, you know, I've been followed. I can't tell you how many times I've been followed by some of, you know, like... Um, you know, Jessica, she, her, her account keeps getting pinched. Um, and you just see them come up and I just, un, I block them, report them, move on. Block them, report them, move on. Um, you know, like people with really massive followings, like Ethany from the tarot community, who's just so cool. The other day, Ethany started following me and I'm like, why would Ethany follow me? And I look at it. And I look at how many followers this account's got and I'm just like, oh, it's another one of those dickhead fake things. New Age Hipster, who I know personally. I love Vix. Um, you know, suddenly Vix is following me. It's like, yeah, right. Um, so that's going on on Instagram. Hold on a minute. I, I, my nose is, I need a tissue and I don't think I've got one. Have I got one out here in the witchy cottage? Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, I'll just have to go like that. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so, yes, so Instagram, I, I really love the prettiness of it and I love being able to connect there, but I don't know how long Instagram's going to last if they don't clean up their act in terms of people getting um, impersonated. Facebook, I don't, I'm not interested in the main feed of Facebook, but I do run a membership site for my creative writing community and I adore it. And uh, it's private. It's, it's like for me, um, the main feed of Facebook is like a city street, like a crowded city street and you yell out and your voice just gets lost in all the <laughs> noise and the kerfuffle and the machines and the street sweepers and the pollution and the rubbish on the floor and all that sort of thing. That's what the main feed of Facebook feels like to me. Uh, it just feels like a crowded, dirty, um, messy, unpredictable city street. But my private Facebook group feels like a cafe, a beautiful cafe that you can escape into, that you can duck into and shut the door and suddenly the ambience changes and you feel held and, if, and you're recognised and loved and the person behind the counter knows what you order and doesn't even have to ask you. <laughs> so that's what the private Facebook group feels like for me. So I do like Facebook, but only when it's curated like that. Um, let me see what else we got here. Oh, TikTok. What the fuck is that? No idea. I mean, I've heard of it, but wouldn't have a clue. Totally clueless. And I hope to remain that way. Same with Twitter. Oh, 
can't bear Twitter. Really bad energy. Sorry. Just feel so predatory. Really, really hate Twitter. So I'm not on, I'm on Twitter. Um, my assistant occasionally puts stuff up there, you know, like um, if just alerts or videos for my creative writing channel, but I, I don't interact on, on, it scares me. Twitter's scary. <laughs> um, uh, what do you feel is missing from our witchy community basically nothing I just adore it I love seeing it evolve and grow the way it wants to the only thing that I would say is not missing but I would like more of would be southern hemisphere witches oh my god we need you know more southern hemisphere witches uh, more diversity um, out there as, as well um, so that would be really nice to see more witches from Australia and New Zealand and um, Indonesia, like New Guinea, like how cool would that be? So that would be really nice. Um, how much space do you use for supplies and spell work? Um, well, I've got the witchy cottage, so that's my kind of, you know, if I really, really need a lot of space, this is where it's at. And the rest in back in the house, very little space at all. Just dressing tables, corners, <laughs> window sills, dining room table. Um, it all spills out everywhere. How many altars do you have in your home? Um, I have two altars in my bedroom, uh, sort of a general goddess altar, and then one to Hecate. Um, and then a little altar in my studio, sort of a little creativity altar, which is not tended very well, I'm afraid. The cats keep knocking that uh, over and <laughs> I don't do spell work in my studio. It's very much a workspace for me. Um, having said that, I do um, occasionally attend women's circles via Zoom in that space. And so when that happens, I usually shoot up a bit. I bring more crystals in. I light incense and candles and I... Uh, make it more um, it make it more ethereal rather than sort of material materialistic uh, work always feels even though work's creative it always has that different energy to it a different energetic pattern to it hmm, it's interesting um, so yeah but I remember hearing someone say that once you become a pagan just about every surface in your home becomes an altar <laughs> and it's a bit like that it really is but um, yeah, only two, two and a half in the house and then this whole space here is an altar. Um, what's your favourite sabbat? Hands down, or sabbat, uh, hands down Samhain. I adore Samhain. Now here in the Southern Hemisphere, Samhain is the 30th of April and it's very quiet, very personal affair. It's not recognised by the wider public. Um, it doesn't even have that Halloween vibe going to it, but it is still, for me as a witch, one of, it is the, the sab uh, Sabbath of the year. I enjoy the lead up to it. I enjoy making a beautiful wreath. This year I went out into the forest and I found pine and um, all this sort of stuff and lots of pine and um, made a beautiful pine wreath and added rosemary and... Um, Mm, ivy from my garden and all this sort of stuff so that was really beautiful and then setting up the altar and getting all my rallies out getting all my loved ones and lost ones out all their photographs and putting them in one place and making offerings and uh, I just love it it's very very special Salon really really love it and then in November southern hemisphere the cuckoo-ness of it we have Halloween we literally have Halloween in, in November um, and that's the more commercial thing that's going on so everyone's saying it's Halloween it's Halloween it's not but you know I just go go along for the ride and I really love it it's I really love it it's very very funny it was more fun back in the city because we had kids trick-or-treating but here in the country it's very very quiet but you do drive around town and see the odd, the odd pumpkin and the odd the odd jack-o-lantern um, and so you know that people are some people are um, celebrating so that's it's really weird, isn't it? So we have Samhain in April and Halloween in November in summer. Go figure. Kooky, kooky world. Um, uh, do you prefer tarot, runes, oracle, deck or pendulum? Tarot, totally. Oracle, love. Love to play with oracle. But 
adore tarot, love learning to read tarot. One day I'll come to runes, find them very fascinating. Almost bought a rune book this morning, pulled myself back because I thought, no, 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 here you go, Miss Magpie, stop it now. <laughs> um, this is a good question. Are you out of the broom closet? I'd say, yeah, I am, weirdly. Um, the YouTube channel was very much the start of it. The Witchy Cottage also announces it to the world. So anyone who comes to my home loves to, you know, we walk around the garden. Um, we come to the back garden and they go, oh, what's this? If they don't already know that there's a witchy cottage there. And there's always a, always a respectful reaction to the witchy cottage. It's sort of like a, I don't know, the energy shifts. You can really feel it when people step into the witchy cottage. They go, oh. oh. <laughs> uh, so I had some elderly cousins in here. A few months ago and so they don't know that I'm a witch or that I'm involved in the pagan community at all um two men and they came in and they were they were really taken they were enjoying it you could tell they were enjoying it they didn't quite know how to formulate questions um uh and that they zeroed in on the Madonna um because they're both Christian um one more so uh, they're Christian in a very cultured way, you know. <laughs> they love to go to the cathedrals and <laughs> you go to St. Pat's at Easter. And that I've always teased them about liking their religion to be culturally uh, sophisticated. So, anyway, um, so yeah, I'm basically out, out of the broom closet. But again, um, my, my parents have passed away, and I don't think I ever would have come out of the closet to them because it would have really frightened my mother. You know, she was post World War II generation, her and my dad, and they were very um, down to earth country people who really couldn't even cope when I went to university. It was so out of the, their realm of what girls do, you know. Um, and, you know, I had to really fight to get an education. Um, so so that, was a, that was confronting enough for them. Um, if I had then turned around when they were in their 80s and 90s and said, oh, by the way, I'm a witch, they would have just sort of blown, <laughs> blown their world apart. So, um, you know, there was no need. There's no need uh, to come out to everybody. Um, you know, we can love people for just who they are and we don't have to um i don't think there's any need in that case um uh so i do have a brother who i'm i'm not out to uh he's another generation you know i was a very late child so i came into a family of baby boomers so um my experience of growing up was quite odd you know um my brothers were baby boomers and I was ex-gen and I was very very different to them and I experienced the world in a different way and of course I was a girl as well and the only girl so um so it had a lot of impact on how I grew up and how I saw, saw the world and I was also um quite precocious and um just different very very friendly and outgoing as a teenager I loved to party and do all those bad things and get out the window and run away and all those sorts of things whereas my brothers were much more um, conformist and um, responsible and all that sort of stuff so um so i haven't come out to um my brother and i i might i'm not i'm not scared to uh it just hasn't come up we don't live near each other he's way over the other side of australia and uh, leads a completely different life to me. And although we are in contact, um, we don't share the, um, the details of our lives much because they're, they're just too different. So I hope I've answered that okay. And my other brother, I don't see very often, um, even though I hear from him once a year and love him very dearly. And then and my other brother passed away. So. So that's where my family's at. Um, uh, who are you going to tag in this? This is the last question. 
<laughs> who are you going to tag in this video? Probably no one. All right. I'll just put a whole lot of links to the channels that I love um, and make that a channel shout out. But um, I don't really know anyone to tag and I don't want to put any pressure on anybody because um, that's just not my nature. Um, <clears throat> so I, I probably won't tag anyway. <sighs> All right. This was a mammoth um, effort. If you've stayed to the end, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed um, going through this with you. I hope that you've got something from it and, um, you know, maybe felt inspired by it or um, whatever, whatever. Uh, it was really cool to hang out with you today in the Witchy Cottage. And uh, I will see you back here again very, very soon because look at me, I'm making videos. <laughs> All right. Brightest blessings to you all. Loads and loads of love. See you soon. Bye.